Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name's Bobby Waldron and I'm here to bring you another step-by-step -step video build by Genesis Models. Now, in this step-by-step -step video build, I want to focus on um, doing spray work like pre-shading, post-shading, um, bleaching, really starting to get fancy. Um, and this is a bit more for the intermediate kind of person who really wants, who's kind of, you know, maybe invested in like a, a decent airbrush, compressor and stuff to do this kind of spray work. With this video build as well, what I want to also do is to focus on weathering, okay? Because um, the build that we're going to be doing is a World War II bomber and these bombers can get really kind of dirty and grimy and everything. So, what I want to focus on is um, stuff like using washes, oh, one second, stuff like using um, filters um, by MIG Production, stuff like the um, washes by MIG Production, we've even got Genesis Models washes as well that we can focus on. Um, and we can use pigments as well, really kind of like make this nice and dirty and show you some nice weathering techniques. But the one thing I'd like to show you is one of these things that is quite hard to do um, and to get used to and to get the hang of it. But if you can get the hang of using uh, modeling oil colors, right, you can really, really produce some very nice um, weathering effects probably um, I would say the best weathering effects that you can possibly make is with oil colors but as I say it's a really tricky hard thing to get used to and I'm going to show you and teach you how to use these and hopefully you can have a couple of goes of it yourself and get used to it and hopefully you'll end up with some superb weathering so just to get on with this this is what the next step-by-step -step video build is going to be. It's going to be Ravel's Junker JU88A4, and this is in a whopping one in 48 scale. We're talking, it's around about um, 30 centimeters from uh, wingtip to wingtip, and from the nose to the tail, we're talking about 41, 42 centimeters. So it's gonna be a pretty big, big model which is going to, um, let's face it, be quite a nice focal point on any kind of display case, okay, and as I've already said we can really do some nice weathering with this kit because, well, you know, it's a World War II bomber and they do get pretty riffy and dirty um, and I'm going to go through how to build it, how to spray it, the decaline, um, you know, and as I say we're going to really try and focus on some um, weathering. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this on the bench. I'm going to give you an inbox review, okay, and um, show you what this kit's all about. Okay, hello there. What we've got now is our inbox review of Ravel's 1 in 48 scale Junker JU88 for um, sorry, A4. This is one in 48 scale, um, it is a big model, um, I have mentioned it's like about 30 uh, centimetres wing tip to wing tip and 42 from tail to nose, so it's a pretty, pretty big model, nice interesting popular aircraft, so what I'm going to start off with is our instructions, typical Revell, we've got, um, it's in German, English, a bit of background just to kind of tell you a bit about the actual aircraft itself. Um, you do have their annoying um, colour mixing chart here, so um, I normally ignore that and kind of research the colours on the internet. Um, <clears throat> Starting off with, um, again, typical Ravel instructions again, I mean, it seems pretty um, straightforward how the cockpit area goes together and it points out all the different colours which goes to their pretty naff colour chart. Um, yeah, it looks like we're going to have quite a bit of detail inside the cockpit area, which looks quite nice. Um, I'm seeing that we're going to have... Um, 
clear parts here at the top. Um, I'd probably go with the uh, micro crystal clear kind of uh, technique to make your own windows. Um, hopefully these um, the, the, the engines are going to fit nicely to the wings because I do find World War II planes the um, they do have a bit of problem fitting. It looks like we've got some nice detail going on with um, our landing gear as well. Um, and yeah, it, do, it does look pretty straightforward. Looks like you can have a um, rotating propeller as well. We've got a couple of bombs that will go on with this kit. Um, but really, I'm not seeing anything on here that looks too complicated, that looks um, like you're going to have loads of moving parts or anything. It does seem to be just a nice um, slap everything together and should be good. Um, we do have um, the um, radio aerial wire thing which I like to use. Um, um, you can get this from Models Argo, it's just like a very fine bit of, um, it's like an elasticated bit of wire to represent that, it's really, really nice. But we'll talk more about that probably on the last video. Um, and that's it really, I mean we've got a nice kind of like um, stencil um, deck of callouts here which looks like there's quite a bit going on there and we've got two different types of aircraft um, markings. now. Forgive me, but I can't actually read the actual German pronunciation of this, but it's a, a 1 slash KG7 um, Mittel Mehrer or something, 1942 to 1943. And then we've got a 7 KG3 um, Blitzguss. Oh, I'm not even going to um, <laughs> bother trying it, but yeah, you get the point. It's um, and that one's 1942, okay. Um, and it's got a nice kind of camo pattern. This have um, has. I think it's um, it's like a, a a duck egg kind of blue underneath, and then we've got this. Um, I think we, it's R -E R L M 71 and. RLM70, um, which does that kind of nice sort of um, sort of a, a shall we say not a it's a, a straight kind of jaggedy kind of camo pattern on top, which is quite nice. And the customer that's bought this one wants um, some added. Um, it's it's where the tail and the engines are sprayed yellow just to kind of liven it up a bit more. So that should be nice and interesting. So coming along to the decals now, um, the decals do look nice. Um, doesn't actually, it's printed in Germany by Ravel, so hopefully they should be okay. Um, Ravel's normally um, quite good with their decals, but I think this is a bit of an old decal sheet, so um, we'll have to see how that goes. But I mean, they look quite nice in registry. Um, and you can read the writing. I'm just trying to look. Uh, maybe the smaller writing is maybe just a little bit on the blurred side, but um, it should be okay. Um, we've got enough decaling solutions to make sure we can um, get this to conform nicely. So, moving on to our bag. Now, I just need to get a blade, put this out of the way. Okay. Uh, we'll start with our. We'll start with the big bags first. Okay, just to have a look at what we've got. Right, then. <clears throat> making sure there's nothing come off in the bag. We're all good. Okay, looking at this, we have some nice um, recessed panel lines, which is good, and they're not over the top panel lines either. They they do look quite nice, crisp. They do look quite consistent. Um, so hopefully we won't have much problems with that. Um, not much on riveting detail. There is some minor riveting detail, but it's not much. Um, we do have some nice cockpit, cockpit detail here. That does look nice. Um, we've got some seats. They do look a bit bland. Um, we've got some MGs. Um, they should be quite nice. Um, Ejector pin marks, not seeing any in some horrible places. Um, it does look quite nice. We've got no 
flash on this one looks real good. So moving along, got our wings in here by the looks of it. Okay, and actually this is um, nice how we've got lots of separate bagging going on and it's quite thick um, plastic as well which is good because it stops all that scratching of the plastic in the box and yeah I mean these wings do look quite nice we've got actually um, underneath quite a bit of riveting detail going on actually um, compared to the last sprue and on the um, top side of the wings we've got some nice actually really nice riveting detail to be honest um, that is looking rather nice moving along again I must say it does seem quite nice and crisp um, you know the whole kind of general feel of um, our pieces here and the details nice um, and it's quite a nice smooth feeling surface too it's not like rough or anything like that the plastics not too thick um, not too thin either um, yeah it is looking really nice and we've got a bit of engine engine um, here not sure what this piece is but it looks uh, quite nice and thin and a bit detailed so that's good um, now we've got a, a bag of what looks like a lot of little goodies and I'm seeing all our clear parts which is a bit of a nightmare I must say when it comes to uh, World War II planes and I am actually really liking how everything is nicely separately bagged that is really a nice touch for this kit because you can actually tell the difference I'm not seeing any scratching or rubbing up against any other plastic parts that you end up having to you know um, sand back out or something um, cockpit detail I'm seeing some dials here and they do look quite nice um, looks like you can really get some nice detail going on there um, and more MG's um, yeah it's lots of nice detail which I'm kind of thinking once it's all put together in the cockpit area we're gonna have quite a nice cockpit by the looks of it um, engines here um, they look nice as well as I say hopefully they'll fit nicely because they you can have problems with the engines going onto the wings always like some sort of a bit of filling Okay, a um, bit more engine detail here. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be looking at um, more than a couple of, well, kind of like different variations maybe, because there is quite a lot of um, JU88. I think there's like an A4, A6, and so on and so on. Um, but yeah, that does look quite nice. Oh, I'll leave the clear parts till last. Um, you know, just to speed things up, I mean, we've got lots of little pieces in here, like propellers, landing gear looks nice. I mean, it's the same as the rest of the, rest of the sprues, actually. It's just, there's no flash going on. There's no nasty ejector pin marks in nasty places or anything. Ooh, this is nice. Now, this sprue has got a lot of nice little tiny pieces that are really nicely detailed. Um, and we've got like ammunition going on, um, ammunition belts going on here. So I mean, that's quite a nice little um, little set of pieces. Um, I'm probably thinking with some of this, um, leave it off, leave it till the last. Because I mean, we are talking. I mean, some of these pieces are really, really thin. Okay, so you might want to be careful when cutting them off and putting them on the model. So nice touch, but I think you need to be careful with that. And then we've got some simple bombs here, uh, free fall bombs. Um, yeah, they look nice, not bad, pretty good. So, now we come to the clear parts, which, um, clear parts on a World War II bomber means lots of masking, lots of cutting, lots of fiddly work, um, you know, needing a lot of patience. Now looking at this, okay, I'm seeing that it is looking quite nice and shiny, but I'm also seeing some imperfections actually. 
Okay, yeah. Now I think I've mentioned this before, but sometimes, depending on how they mould these um, clear parts and whatnot, um, what can happen is, is if they, because um, when they kind of eject, inject, say here we have like three, uh, four tabs either side of um, this um, clear part here, and when they inject it into like a lot of different parts, they inject, uh, they inject the clear plastic in there, and when they um, say, you know, the um, plastic that gets injected here meets where the plastic plastic gets met, uh, injected at this tab when it touches it can leave this kind of nasty line um, that almost looks like a scratch a crack but it's not it's where the, the two in, the two bits of injected plastic meet and they seem to form this kind of crack looking um, it's not mega bad but I mean it is there um, there is nothing you can do about this. You can sand at it, sand at it, and sand at it. I mean, that is right down to the core of the plastic. So, you'd literally sand away the plastic before you get rid of it. So, um, bit of a pain. Um, there is, I must, mm, I mean, it is kind of on a lot of them actually, which is quite disappointing. Um, I mean, we might be able to get away with a bit of sand in here because, I mean, it looks a little uh, ripply and warped rather than that injector problem on this one. But on here, we've got a pretty nasty one right here uh, to the point where I might actually be tempted to try and cut that out and then maybe try using the uh, micro crystal clear technique to create a window. Um, oh, yeah, bit of a shame actually, because that kit was looking really, really nice, and then looking at this glass, it's it's not perfect, okay. And I just know there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, so it's one of these things you've got to kind of put up with. Um, but as I say, I mean. On the other hand, if you give it a good, good polish with like your polishing compounds and stuff, I mean, they are kind of small um, glass areas, and you know, hopefully, you know, you can get away with it. But um, you know, not brilliant, I must say. However, we've got some. Oh, look at that as well. Ugh. There's like two sprues here, and they put them on top of each other, and I can just imagine they're going to be scratched and everything um, <coughs> being in the bag, as you can see. Take them off. Um, okay, just looking at these. And again, I am seeing those injection problems in fact i don't know if these are actually slight scratches maybe from this being on top going on down yeah i think we've got some little scratches on here which is actually from um, this um, sprue being on top which isn't a big deal because we can um, polish them out and apart from that these actually look quite good However, this one has been sat on top of there, so the scratches are possibly going to be on the inside. I'll just have a look. Yep, and we have scratches on the inside, which getting scratches on the inside are a lot harder to remove than scratches being on the outer side. So this one will be easy to move, this one won't. However, um, I don't know if we're being given... Um, Actually, to be honest with you, I think this is like, yeah, um, this looks like an identical um, piece. So actually, where you might have had, where I've got two on top of each other, I think actually I should have only received one. So I think I've got a duplicate here, but without looking at the instructions, um, I can't be totally sure, but it, yeah, it's looking like a duplicate. So um, that shouldn't have probably been in the kit. Which is a bit of a shame because that has gone ahead and scratched that one. So that's a bit of a pain. Um, <clears throat> okay, so kind of final conclusion of an out of the in box review. Um, 
the kit and all the plastic parts look really nice it does look really nicely detailed i must say it does look like a very nice kit looks like there's a lot of detail going on there the decals they look nice and everything um, i'm not sure because they do look a bit old that we might have problems with getting solutions to work and everything but they do look nice the instructions look nice needs to follow however as i've already gone on about this these clear parts um are a bit disappointing okay um hopefully a bit of work polishing a little bit of sanding hopefully we can make them look nice but um i don't think we're going to get that really nice perfect perfect look look i think if you kind of come in close and you have a look at the um canopy areas really close you're going to see these little injection injector problems and it, you know, I don't think it's going to spoil it. I think it's just going to be a little bit of a disappointment at the end. Um, but we will see because we're going to do this as a step-by-step -step video build. So we're going to see, you know, at the end how this turns out. See if we can tackle the problems and all that stuff. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, at the moment, it's looking like a nice recommended kit. Um, to be honest, I forgot how much it was. Um, I. I ooh. I think it was something like 30 pound, give or take 10 pound or something, I don't know. It was around about there, um, which doesn't seem quite bad considering you get quite a big, big model. Um, so apart from that, I hope you enjoyed. Right then, I hope that you have enjoyed the inbox review of our Revell's Junker JU88. Um, it was a very interesting kit. Um, so what's going to happen now is, um, this is going to be basically the end of part one. This was a nice teaser video to kind of just show you, you know, what is the next step-by-step -step video build and get you, a, get you an inside look of the kit that we're going to be doing. So if you want to watch all the rest of the parts, which could be, I don't know yet, we're probably maybe talking about 10 parts, 10 videos, and the videos are going to be maybe between... 40 to uh, 60 minutes long um, and where you can view that is on the forum at genesismodels.co.uk and there you can register as a free member to look and interact on the rest of the website and the forum and everything but to actually view the videos you'll need to subscribe as a premium member it's only going to cost you £3.99 a month which is Let's face it, it's the cost of buying, say, an Airfix magazine or something. Um, so it's, you know, it's not a big amount and you will get like a lot of nice videos to really start to teach you how to build this Junker JU88. We've also got like a, a Red Arrows up there as well, reviews, um, competitions and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to watch this, get over to genesismodels.co.uk. Um, apart from that, from part one, I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Until next time, have a good time modelling and I'll see you later.